number five. It's been good so far. Very exciting, and good morning, everyone watching at home or abroad. What a sensational group of races we have for you this morning. So the women's quad. Last year, China won this one. This year, it'll either be Canada or Great Britain. Leicester and Leander on the back station to the right of your picture. That's the GB quad against the Canadians there, Shawnigan Lake School. There's a name they're under at Henry Raw Regatta. Watching this start. The GB boat heading a little bit central. They've had a problem with their steering early there. They've gone too far away from Temple Island on the right, and the umpire intervenes. Immediately out comes the white flag to try and get them back on the Bucks side of the water. But Cameron, that's going to have cost them, won't it, in terms of distance to travel and energy expended and nerves as well. Absolutely, steering issues off the start, but also a little bit sleepy to my eyes. The Canadians look as though they were up nice and aggressive in that high 40, sort of 47, 48 strokes a minute, and that is rewarded already, we can see, with about half a length lead, which in this international event is massive off the start. So the Canadians flying out on a good line, and the GB boat having an early problem but they have settled down into a rhythm and they have got back into some sort of element of calm that really wouldn't have been uh, the race plan well I think the most important thing here is to think about what's happened has happened now we have to focus on our rhythm our race pace and in the quad that, that high race pace is not too different from maximum speeds so that they can settle into something that's really high and sustainable they can chug down that course and make up that half length which they're already doing from my eyes the boat nearest the camera there's a great little subplot going on here because you've got in the bow seat, Lauren Henry, she's 21 years old and has had a, two previous Henry Raw regattas. A couple of years ago, she beat Andra Prosk, who was just back from Tokyo and a gold medal, and then uh, lost to Lola Anderson in the final by three feet, and now she's in the same boat. And, and they are uh, moving, they've got amazing speed that they're just settling into something really nice and high, they're chunking through and they've just moved in front of that Canadian boat on the far side of your picture. Yeah, so that was a good shift there, a good couple of hundred metres from Leicester and Leander, or the GB boat as they are. And there's huge pedigree in this event for the women's national team in Great Britain. Large number of wins in the last 20 years or so. I can remember when I was rowing, it would always be our top women athletes that would be winning this event. It's a huge pedigree here for the Great Britain team. Canada yet to win, and I think this is their first time that they want to try and get first Henley for all of them. So they'll be trying to get a great performance to, to win and get that boat across the line first. Yeah, we've got some uh, doubling up going on in the Princess Grace here in the Canada boat. Watch out for Carling Zeman, who's just rode in the uh, Princess Grace and uh, has also been uh, giving it a go across in the uh, women's double skulls in the stoner, so she's busy. And speaking of chopping and changing, I think Rebecca Wilde in the three seat for the Leicester Rowing Club and Leander Club composite from Great Britain has just subbed in last minute due to an injury as well. Yeah, that was for Lola Anderson, as I mentioned. So just watching as they head away from Temple Island. And it's the GB boat that settled into the race better after some early mishaps. And one thing to bring to our attention is just the swirling nature of this wind. There's a bit of cross tail, cross head. It looks like it's moving around a bit. It's quite tricky conditions for the boats on the water today. And I'm sure that will build through the morning as we see more and more pleasure cruisers get more popple and more liveliness to the water. But Cameron, as you look at that, they've very really settled here, haven't they? That looks uh, very impressive from the GB boat now. Very impressive and lovely quad sculling. For those of us watching at home, we can just hopefully appreciate the, the symmetry and the synchronicity of all eight oars going into the water nicely. And actually what's really nice to look at is just that big, strong leg drive, all four pairs of legs going right down together. You can just appreciate those gusts of wind across the, 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 uh, the course there. And, and you can, yeah, absolutely. Watching the uh, Canadian boat, and they were having their own battles with that wind. And they're quite close to the booms, aren't they? On the blades on the right-hand side of the picture, the Canadian boat was getting close to those booms. But here you can see the GB boat continuing. They both were in Varese at the recent World Cup. The Canadian boat out there finishing ninth at that World Cup regatta. 
and for Great Britain, they got a silver medal and actually set a new British record, 6 minutes 9.03. It'll be a bit longer today because uh, it's a longer race and uh, more arduous conditions. Lovely rhythm being set down by Georgina Brasher in the stroke seat there on the left-hand side of your picture. I think hopefully you can appreciate as well on the right-hand side, I think it's just a little bit more challenging as that crosswind pushes those boats across to the booms. We saw that earlier in one of the races. Now you get a good view of the Canadians and the glance over the shoulder in the bow seat there from Shannon Kennedy. Keep checking that steering. So for the Canadians, this will be the time where we've got to think it's one-on-one -on -one racing. It's not multi-lane racing like we're used to at World Cups and World Championships. If they want to try and get their hull in front of the British, they just need to bring their race plan forward now and they need to push and move. So you can see the lead there carved out by Leander. We've got lots of Leander boats on the water throughout today. 14 in the finals. This is the first of 14 boats we'll see from Leander Club in the finals. And it looks, as they head in front of the enclosures in the next minute or so, that they will be the first to win a trophy. But what have the Canadians got left? Lovely shot of Lauren Henry in the bow seat there. Beautiful quad sculling from that yellow M-Packer hull. Canadians trying to keep pace, trying to keep asking the question nagging away and this is just a lovely example of fantastic quad sculling from both nations for those youngsters watching at home just have a look at how simple this rowing looks really easy plop blades go in the water and push really simple beautiful quad sculling so looks as if Lester and Leander moving further clear polite applause will turn into more noisy applause in the next few moments. This is the fifth final of Henry Royal Regatta 2023. The Canadians against the GB boat in the women's quads. Last year it was a Chinese and Chinese will be back fighting against these boats in the next few weeks. But here at Henley, it's going to belong to Great Britain, the Princess Grace Challenge Cup. And what a special moment for these women. It's not every day that you get all the stars aligning and get a crew together for Henley, the busy international racing season. And here they are into the stewards' enclosure, hopefully winning this event. Over the line they go. Lauren Henry with one last look over her shoulder, and they've done it. Lauren Henry, Hannah Scott, Rebecca Wilde, and Georgina Brayshaw winning the Princess Grace Challenge Cup in the colours of Leicester Rowing Club and Leander Club, beating the Canadians. They come over the line now. A good performance that'll give the GB set up some cheer as they head off to Lucerne next week and the World Cup out there next weekend. Comfortable win in the end. Yeah, comfortable win, really well executed race plan there. And also the legacy continues, such a strong representation from Great Britain in this event. Fantastic to see. I think after their early steering around Temple Island, it was a masterclass in how to stay cool and make sure you don't get too distracted, because that was anything but the race plan, wasn't it, that first minute?